Hello everybody, in today's video, let's talk about buy song flipping. So first off, what is Bali song flipping? Though I'm sure a lot of you guys watching the video right now are familiar with Bali songs, or as the West calls them, butterfly knives, from games like Team Fortress 2, CSGO, Valorant, and Apex. But to put it simply, a Bali song is a blade that's sandwiched between two handles, and they are connected by pivots. Which means that if you were to open a Bali song, you have to flip it open. Bali song flipping is the art of swinging and flipping the handles and blade around while avoiding the blade. Though a lot of people don't know how the Bali song works, which is why a lot of moves like the Chaplin is confusing to them, but here's basically how it works. There are two sides to a Bali song blade. You have the safe side and the bite side. The safe side is not sharp at all, which means that you can run your finger across it and it won't hurt you at all. However, what I'm holding here is a trainer, which is not a real blade at all and it's simply a dull slab of metal with holes in it that you can't sharpen and well, it won't hurt you at all. As for the two handles of the Bali Song, you have the bite handle, where the bite side of the blade would be facing towards, and the safe handle, which is the safe side. I actually started flipping back in 2019. That was years ago, although I did stop flipping as much in 2020 and 2021. And I did get back to it for a little bit this year because, well, during my break, I was like, I'm bored, let's flip. To be honest, I'm still very much a beginner. You can tell because when I flip, I very much still have that um, beginner's elbow where I move my elbow way too much. Yeah, I can't do the backhand fan. So I'm assuming that a lot of you guys watching this video right now don't know how to flip. So here are four moves as a quick introduction on Valley Song Flipping. So the first move I'll teach you is called the double rollout. And it looks like this. You start by holding the bite song like this with the safe handle in your hand and then flick the bite handle over your knuckles like this. After that, loosen your grip and move the bite handle over your hands like this. So you want to have a very loose grip and do it this way. Like almost as if you're trying to do a fan. So you move it like this and then you throw on the safe side of the blade over your knuckles again and then let go of your fingers here and throw it back. Notice that when you repeat this move, you can close the bite song Throw it over your knuckles, turn it around, throw it over again, and then throw it back. So when you first get it down, it might be a bit awkward, but when you do it quickly enough, it should feel like this. Oh, whoops, there's a fan. Okay. But when you get it down, it should look like this. Like you're just twirling around on your hands, but somehow you're closing it and opening it. I mean, a double roller is only one turn, but I'm just demonstrating how it's like moving it around your fingers. The reason why this is a nice move is because, well, it means that you can open the knife for a while trainer with only one hand. The next move I'll teach would be the Y2K. It's like a lot of pen spinning tricks, you know, you hold it in your hand, you twirl around your thumb, and you hold it like that. You start by holding the bite song in like a pencil grip. Make sure whatever you're doing, you're holding the bite handle. And what you're going to do is you're going to throw it around your thumb. So what will happen is that it will go around your thumb like this. And you'll catch here. And now you can see that the safe side is going towards your fingers. It will hit your fingers. At this point, you can raise your hand like this and bring it up. The mistake that a lot of people do is that they move their wrist so much. But whatever you do, keep your wrist still. Keep your thumb straight. The entire movement should be like this. So. When you do it, it'll look like this. You are catching the opposite handle that's flying around your finger. So here's the full move. Okay, the next I will teach, okay, it's not really another move. It's simply a Zen rollover, which is a Y2K that starts on the other handle. So now the sharp side of the blade is going to be hitting your hand. And to avoid that, you do a wrist pass, where you flip your hand downwards and everything should be fine. So that's how the Zen rollover looks like. So the Y2K was kind of like a vertical movement like that. Uh, well, I thought it kind of horizontal, but it's actually a vertical movement. The Zen rollover is more horizontal. So you hold it horizontally like this. And now you're switching the handle you're holding on. Now you're holding the safe handle, which means that when you flick it around your hand and it goes around like this, what's coming at you is now the blade. And to avoid this, your palm is up, right? You flick it down 
and gravity should bring the handle to close. Same thing as the Y2K as a horizontal, do it like that, and then this movement of like you're going up to down, up to down. This is a Zen Rollo and full. The next move I will teach is quite advanced, but I think it's a great move to immediately teach someone. They, they'll spend a week practicing it, but it's great to teach you the basic momentum and how the knife will flow in your hand. I mean, Will Hirsch had agreed with me that this move, which is behind the eight ball, is great for teaching beginners like pretty early on. I'll break it down into three steps. You start by holding the bias on like this, the safe handle, open it up, stick your index finger here, and then bring it across like this. So what's going to happen is that the entire bias is going to roll over your hand and you will catch the same handle that you were throwing. So you have to make this like okay sign while you're doing it. From this okay sign, the bias song should look like this. At this point, you can see your index finger is here. So what you're going to do is that you're going to insert your thumb up here. So it's like a down to up movement. And when it's down to up, it's the second part of the move where you will throw your hand like this and you see the safe side of the blade is going to go around your thumb. And you catch it like this. So here it is. So when you're at this point, there's still one handle here. So what you're going to do is you're going to throw it over your hand again. Throw it over. It will go around your finger and catch the bite handle. And now you can see that the blade is about to hit my hand. And this is where you do a wrist pass. This is quite complicated a move, but there's other tutorials of it out there. And good luck. If you guys want better videos explaining how to do moves and moves to learn, well, Will Hirsch has made a video about the five basic moves that a beginner should learn first. And there are already a lot of tutorial channels out there teaching you how to flip a ballet song. Like there's Big Flips, which is a really big one. For some reason, I found this really small channel that's really good at making tutorials. They're short, easy, and these videos are great. So this part of the video, you might be thinking of getting into ballet song flipping yourself if you haven't. And while I do have a bunch of recommendations, and we'll talk about the ballet song trainers that I do own and have, but it's pretty important for me to go more in depth about how a ballet song is constructed so that you guys can make some informed decisions yourself. First off, a lot of Bison trainers uses torque screws, which are these screw bit sizes. So please be sure to get the correct screw bit size for your Bali song and don't buy cheap screw bits. If you ruin your expensive Bali song, please, that's just not worth it at all. A lot of people on Reddit and other places recommend Weeha drivers. I do have one and it's pretty good, but yes, be careful. There are two types of handle constructions. You have the channel handles where it's completely filled out and has like a def or hole for the blade to sit in versus sandwich which is two metals sandwiched together. And then you have the pin system. This is what stops the handles from swinging completely around the pivots. You have tang pins and you have zen pins. So tang pins are recognized by the two pins you can see at the base of the blade. These pins come into contact with the handles, which stops the handles from, well, swinging all the way through. And, well, for Zen pins, they're most recognizable by, well, the Zen nipple. <laughs> they will come into contact with the Zen pins, which are found inside the handles. So that's how it stops it from moving around. Tank pins and Zen pins are two very different construction types, and they have a different feel whenever you are flipping. Zen pins tend to feel bouncier, and, well, tank pins feel, well, more controlled. The other thing to know is that a lot of cheap body songs tend to use tank pins and they are not very good tank pins because those tank pins wear out or fall out and it just renders the body song useless. Although for much better constructed and more expensive body songs that use tank pin systems, that doesn't happen. And now for when you take apart the body song. There are three kinds of pivot systems in body songs. Washers, bushings and ball bearings. Washer body songs basically have two washers between the blade and the handle. These body songs are harder to tune because if you tighten the body song too tight, the handle stops swinging freely. On the other hand, you have bushing body songs. Bushing body songs run on washers and bushings. Bushings are these tiny hollow cylinders that you put into the blade. And this thing here stops the handles from being tightened completely onto the blade, which means that you can tighten the screws on the body song as tight as possible and the handles won't become stiff. Bushing ballet songs also have better tolerances than washer ballet songs because the bushings stop the washers from rubbing against the blade and the handle too much. And then there's the last one, ball bearing ballet songs. These ballet songs run on ball bearings, a little like yo-yos. The thing about ball bearing ballet songs is that they can have perfect tolerances. 
But the thing is, they also play the most differently from the other two pivot systems because of the ball bearings. They are very frictionless. A lot of flippers actually don't like flipping ball bearing Bali songs because of how fast they can be. And right, that's pretty much it for what a Bali song entails. I mean, there's also a latch, although most people take off the latch if they are doing flipping because the latch can get in the way. Then after that for maintenance, when you own a Bali song, you do want to actually maintain it if you want it to play really nicely all the time. The first thing you need is, well, lube. And while this video is actually sponsored by Knife Pivot Lube, I'm a fan of Knife Pivot Lube. I'm not paid to do this, they just gave me some of their lube for free and I'm eternally grateful. Dry Bali songs feel horrible to flip, and with lube, it just makes everything feel so much smoother. And well, when you're lubing your Bali songs, please whatever you do, don't use WD-40, that's not a lube. Instead, get Knife Pivot Lube. They use their own lube formula that actually smells nice for some reason, but it makes your knife sing. I mean, if you don't believe me, just hear this. They also have other weights for their lube, like the KPL Lite and KPL Original. Personally, for ballet songs, I prefer KPL Heavy the most, although some people might like KPL Original. Anyway, that's it for Shilling Knife Pivot Lube. If you guys are interested in getting some, I'll left the link in the description. And well, let's just continue. I'm not sure how to stop this ad read because it's basically what I'm explaining. But anyways, ballet songs are held together by screws, right? And screws can become loose after you flip it a lot or you drop your ballet song. And that's where Loctite comes in. It's a thread locker. You can get Loctite for pretty cheap. All you have to do when you install Loctite is to add just a teeny drop on the ends of your screws and then screw it in. Leave it alone for like 12 hours and your knife should be nice and tight now. There's a bit more for Bali song maintenance like tuning your Bali song but well I won't go through that in this video. You can watch Screw Industries video on Bali song maintenance. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. And here's the other thing about Bali song maintenance and Bali song wear. To tell if a Bali song is a good quality Bali song or not, you have to look at a couple of things. First off is handle play. This is how much your handles move apart from each other when you open it and well move it up and down. Bali songs with minimal play tends to play more consistently. Although of course, some play is nice because it'll make flipping a Bali song feel more flexible. Cheap Bali songs tend to have a lot of handle play after dropping a lot because of their poor construction. The other thing is this thing called tap. To test for tap, just hold your Bali song in a closed position and shake it. Good Bali songs from reputable makers should not be tapping out of the box. However, if you treat your Bali song as a beater, which is you just beat the shit out of it, drop it on concrete, it will always eventually develop tap and a level of handle play. Though the last thing that should never happen is handle slap. This is when your pivot system fails and your handle starts slapping together when you close it. I don't have an example on me right now, but handle slap is very bad. Your Bali song is basically busted at that point. So at this point, you might be wondering, okay then, what Bali song do I get? I will just talk about the Bali songs I own and my recommendations. If it's not obvious enough, I am a huge Squid Industries fan. Here's the thing about Bali song flipping, it's not a cheap hobby in the slightest. It is very expensive, especially when going for a quality Bali song, which I highly recommend when you first start out with because cheap Bali songs are just so bad. This is a $20 Bali song you can get from AliExpress and it is very heavy. Oh, in fact, I think it's a clone of another Bali song done really poorly because it says here that this is a Benchmade. It's not. I haven't explained yet, but this thing is very handle biased, which means that the handle of this thing is very, very heavy compared to the blade, which makes doing fans very difficult. Like, you can see me try to attempt a choker and it's just flopping. On the other hand, Squid Industries' body songs are more neutral, so you can see that I'm doing fans on it just fine. 
well, uh, I'm not really in a great position to be flipping, but yeah, okay. But there is still merit to having a handle-heavy Bali song. Although just not this one, because it's just uncomfortable to flip. Because, well, it's thin in the sides, it's hard to grip. It pinches you like a bitch. I mean, is it flippable? Yes. It's just not good. In fact, that is what I would say about a lot of $20 Bali songs on Amazon. Especially those replica ones of games, like the Apex Legends Bali song. Yeah, don't buy that. That's not good for flipping. And whatever you do, don't buy those CSGO Bali song knives. Those things are curved. You're very limited in the number of moves you can do on those. But yes, I've dilly dallied a bit. Let me just talk about the Bali songs I own. So let's start with the cheapest one. This is the Squiddy G. All Bali songs sound different and they all feel different in play. This is a plastic Bali song and he has the cutest cat face ever. It is still very expensive for most people and by the way the sound of this is not accurate. I kind of just muted it. I added some foam inside because this is actually a very loud buy song. They discontinued the Squiddy G for their newer line of the Squiddy B and Squiddy U. For those, they have a silencer around the nose of this thing so that it's not as loud. There's still the normal Squiddy which doesn't have that nose there. The nose actually helps as a weight to make it more neutral and the original Squiddy is more, uh, I think, handle bias if I'm not wrong, but yes. The thing about the Squiddies though is that they have no indication of which is the bite side of the blade so you have to get like a rubber band to put at one side to let you know which is the bite handle. Though note that the Squiddy is made of plastic so it's very 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 light. It will take a bit to adjust to this and it will take a bit to adjust to an actual metal bias song if you get something like this. The next up I have is the Mako 4.5. This is their most budget aluminium trainer on Squid Industries and well, it's nice. It sounds nice. Just listen to it. I don't really flip this one. The blade is unhardened if I'm not wrong. If you drop it enough, the blade will start bending. This runs on washers and the gills at the side here, they are meant for grip. It's pretty decent flipper. The other cute thing about this though, other than the fact that it's a shark, is well, the mouth is actually a bottle opener. <laughs> And also, the fin here actually kind of sucks. Imagine you're doing a double rollout and... Ow! Ow! I mean, by right, if you do the double rollout correctly, it shouldn't even touch your wrist. It shouldn't hurt too much, but still, for a beginner, I wouldn't recommend this. Even though it's the cheapest one. So next up, there's the Triton. There's nothing to go up in price. The older Triton didn't have the line here, and I believe the steel here is now more hardened. It's less susceptible to bending like it was back then. This also runs on washers and is Zen pin system. Finish here is quite rough, actually. It won't slip out of your hand. So this is how it sounds like. Yeah, this doesn't ring compared to the next one, which is the Squid Trainer. I think this is a 3.5 version. This is my first proper Bali song. It is Squid Industries' biggest product until the Kraken came out. This thing are properly hardened, you no know, matter how much you drop it and beat it like the way I did, it's fine. As you can see, that the grip here is actually really well made. It's much grippier than the Triton. This also runs on washers and Zen pins. This thing is a... it's tapping. <laughs> this thing has a, a bigger ring to it. Yeah, the Squid Trainer ring. Then the next up that I have would be the Nautilus. This one's pretty expensive. This is quite different. It uses G10 scales, which means that this is not metal. This is fiberglass. It uses tank pins. It's quite the silent flipper. All right, I forgot to mention the spines. The spine on this is Chen foot. Which means that if you're doing something like a chaplain on this, it's less painful on your fingers, like it's more comfortable. For the Marco, for example, there's no chamfer, there's no crowning, so this is like, it has the edges, which makes chaplain feels a bit less comfortable. Same with the Triton, this doesn't have any crowning or chamfering. Although the Squid Trainer does have crowning on the safe side, which makes it quite comfortable to do chaplains. Out of all my trainers, the Nautilus is my favourite. It's lighter than the rest of the trainers. And the last one, the Kraken. This is the one that I've been flipping all over this video. It has the nicest ring. <laughs> oh, this thing sounds beautiful. But it's also the most expensive. The Kraken is an amazing flipper, but this is definitely not budget for anyone. Like, it's the best flipper for its price. There's a reason why you will find a lot of people flipping this. It basically plays itself. It runs on bushings, a Zen pin system, so it's a lot more bouncier than my Nautilus. But this, it feels amazing. Overall, I love Squid Industry stuff. 
they are a great company and I love their products. To be honest, right now, there's a lot of more competitive budget trainers out there that is rising in the market. Generally, Amazon trainers have a terrible rep, but things are starting to change ever since Nabas. I spoke to Will Hirsch for this video. I talked to him about a lot of things. But basically, Will Hirsch is this giant Biosong content creator on YouTube and he makes amazing videos. He worked with a company to create a Biosong and it's called The Valp. I reached out to Nabali's because they sent me their product. Oh God. Ooh. They sent me their product, the Morse, which was honestly a very good flipper. And if you can get a hold of that, I would highly suggest it as a cheap ballast song as an alternative to the uh, Volp. But the Morse is this really interesting ballast song that I thought was very cool, but the design could use a little bit of work. And so I emailed them and I was like, hey, would you want to work with me to like make this construction, but a little bit better design? And they said, yes. What we ended up doing was improving the overall construction and the design. So you have these grips up here that are all of the design elements are kind of based off of my logo. All of the shapes right here are for grip, obviously. Then it has very intense jimping. Like I'm looking at this and right? like, damn, a budget trainer with jimping. <laughs> I know. And it's channel. Um, and it's like, it's very, it's intense jimping. Another thing you'll notice is it's got a pretty big handle gap, right? The reason for that is it makes it very hard to pinch your fingers in the handle gap. Oh, wait, that's a problem I had with my <laughs> squid trainer. Exactly. This handle gap is not as wide. What I did when I designed this thing was I tried to think of as many things that make people stop flipping. And one of them was pain. So like when it snaps your fingers and it like pinches you, you know, that sucks. And then people will like have that happen a few times and be like, well, I'm done. And then they just quit flipping. Same thing also with the Zen pin nipple area. So the actual nipple, I made it very, very short, very small. That's very flat. Um, so I wanted it to be as flat as possible because I had a Squid Trainer V 1.5. And wow. that thing had a huge nipple that was like, it would pinch the living daylights out of you. Other body songs right now that are very competitive for its price would be like the Glider Antarctic, I believe. And there's also the BB Firefly, the new version that's like nicer. And generally, there's just a lot of options on the market right now. It's like the best time for a beginner to learn body song flipping. I have all these expensive stuff and I'm not even that good, but I enjoy owning and having all these different body songs. I've been going pretty hard at this. I mean, I even have a spreadsheet of the different moves that I'm learning. But in the end, this hobby is definitely not for everyone. But I think rhythm gamers would totally be into this. I prefer this hobby over things like yo-yos because for body songs, you only move your fingers and your wrist a little at most. But for yo-yos, it's more like a full body kind of deal. And same with things like kandamas. Body song flipping is very much like a skill, like rhythm games. And when I do things like an aerial, I'm counting the beats in my head like I am in a rhythm game. The interview I had with Will Hirsch is actually really interesting. Uh, too bad I'm not using like all of it in this video. If you guys want to hear what we talked about, I also left a link in the description. And I'd like to give thanks to everyone who helped me make this video possible. And thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoy it. Also, by the way, I forgot to mention, whatever you do, don't flip while you're close to anything that has a screen. I mean, I think I scratched my Apple Watch when I tried flipping my left hand on this thing earlier. Yeah, and like from a failed index rollover, I also kind of like drop this thing on my feel dap and now the top part of the screen is kind of fucked up and <sighs>